ADRA tackles youth unemployment in Uruguay with free courses. Student from Adventist School in Brazil will exhibit artworks at the Louvre Museum in Paris. Seventh-day Adventist Church in Moldova empowers pastors through evangelism training. These and other inspiring stories now here on ANN News. Stay tuned. ADRA combats youth unemployment in Uruguay by offering free vocational training courses. Uruguay is the country with the highest youth unemployment rate in South America. According to official data, six out of 10 unemployed people in the country are under 30 years old, although at the same time, it is one of the nations with the lowest overall unemployment rate. In addition to that, in the field of education, 60% of young people aged 18 to 24 do not finish high school which is assumed to be an impediment to finding work. This is because when looking for a job, young people only have academic training as a tool since they do not have work experience. In this scenario, the Uruguayan youth population seems to not be finding solutions in the job market. In the last period studied, the youth unemployment rate is 26.4%, almost triple the national unemployment rate of 8.2%. To help the younger population, the Adventist Development Agency for Support and Assistance Resources in Uruguay offers free professional training courses. Among the options are classes in hairdressing, cooking, polygraphy, and crafts. Additionally, for young people who show interest in returning to school or who have difficulty with their studies, ADRA also provides school support classes. Every year, the Development Adventist Agency manages to support more than 1,000 children and young people throughout Uruguay. A student from the Adventist School in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, is on the verge of achieving an extraordinary feat. Endowed with exceptional talent for canvas painting, she will have artworks exhibited at the Louvre Museum in Paris. Sophia Helena, a 10-year-old girl, began her artistic journey in the halls of the Adventist College of Jacarepaguá in Rio de Janeiro. Endowed with exceptional talent, Sophia impressed her teacher with her unusual artistic skills, who informed her mother recommending that she invest in her daughter's talent. Born and raised in Majorera, a traditional neighborhood on the outskirts of Rio de Janeiro, Sofia defies expectations and wins hearts with her art. With her delicate brush strokes, she transforms canvases into windows to lush landscapes, animal portraits, and vivid abstractions. Selected in an international competition, Sofia will not only have one, but two of her works exhibited this October at the prestigious Louvre in Paris. The world's most visited museum will open its doors to receive the creations of an artist who has barely left childhood, a feat that few artists can claim. Her Seventh-day Adventist faith, rooted in her education and family, is her foundation. Sophia sees her art as a way to share Jesus' love with the world. For her, each brushstroke is an expression of gratitude and praise for the talent that God has given her. Join us as we spotlight the inspiring stories of female leaders at Adventist Development and Relief Agency who have been making significant contributions to global communities for over 40 years, promoting initiatives in education, healthcare, and economic development. I'm Lisa Augsburger, Programs Director for ADRA Switzerland. The first time I worked with ADRA was in 2002 in Guinea-Bissau as a volunteer. I studied law, <laughs> nothing related to humanitarian. I never felt that I, I should be a lawyer, you know, it wasn't something for me. That's when I thought, oh, maybe a volunteer, you know, uh, time out to think and yeah, to go to Africa, to meet people, to be useful. God opens some doors and everything felt right to go to, to Guinea-Bissau. It was the first experience. I didn't know anything about ADRA, but I learned in the field. I used to say that I got the, the virus of ADRA <laughs> and you cannot you know, change. You, you fell in love with ADRA and the work and yeah, that's it. I find rewarding when I met some beneficiaries from one program in, in Togo, literacy program. And they were so excited to show me that they were able to use their cell phones 
and to enter my number in their cell phones by themselves. And I, I know that's pretty simple for us, but for them it was something huge because those women, they couldn't use their cell phones because they couldn't read. When they needed to enter a, a number in the cell phone, they needed to ask someone to do it. But then with the literacy program that we had in Togo, in eighth month, they could learn how to read, to write, and to use the cell phone. I will always remember when we go to the villages and we have the cars and it's written Adra in the cars. And then people will step out their houses and greet us like Adra. Adra, and I know it's small, but it's touching because they know us in the field, they know us. And they know that if we are here, it's to do good. I think that one of the big achievements that Adra has is to be known as good implementer. Donors, they know that they can trust Adra. And they can, you know, because they know that the work will be done. One of the lessons that, that I've learned is that Adra is a big family. We have struggles, of course, but we are always together and supporting each other. I, I believe that Adra has impacted uh, where we work. Sometimes beneficiaries, they feel like they are uh, transparent or nobody sees them. And then maybe with a small project or small action, we did recognize that they are a human being. We give them the opportunity to grow. And after years, when you meet someone and they say, oh, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, Adra did this or that for me and it changed my life. And yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> I would love to see for Adra in the future that we are more known you know, outside the Adventist bubble, because we are really everywhere and we are really active. We are working for our God, and if they know Adra, they will know also our God, you know, and that's a, a way to share God's love. My Adra, my story is to let people know that they matter and they are loved and seen. My name is Lisa and I am Adra. For the next video in this series, stay tuned as we continue to showcase the inspiring stories of Adra's female leaders and their remarkable contributions to communities worldwide. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Moldova held a training session for over 30 local pastors at its headquarters in Chisnau. The Field School of Evangelism, initiated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Euro-Asia region, provided spiritual reflections on various topics such as the heavenly sanctuary and the three angels' messages. Pastors participating in the training gained not only theoretical knowledge, but also actively engaged in practical components, including presenting missionary plans for communities, participating in workshops, and contributing to the youth project, Leave the Bad, Take the Good. At the conclusion of the training, Local leaders addressed all participants with a call on behalf of the Lord to grow in service and fulfill the mission of saving people, setting high goals for themselves and the church. The culmination of the field school was the dedication of all its participants to the cause of evangelism. Even before the Seventh-day Adventist denomination was founded in 1863, Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping Adventists had begun to ask whether they should be conducting missions outside North America. So the winter of 1859, one of these Adventists, a Mr. A. H. Lewis, writes to the Review and Herald. Now that's the church's paper, but it's more than a paper because it binds together this small movement which is scattered across a large part of the United States. And he writes to the editor and asks, is the third angel's message being given or to be given except in the United States? So you note the twofold question, is it being given and is it even to be given? And the review editor, Uriah Smith, publishes the letter along with an editorial note in reply in which he says, we have no information that the third message is at present being proclaimed in any country besides our own. And then he continues with an ingenious suggestion. He says, it might not perhaps be necessary to do this, he means, in order to, to fulfill Revelation 10, 11, 
because our own land is composed of people from almost every nation. That he says is the third message being given. It's about the three angels' messages. You might expect him to reply in terms of Revelation 14, 6, but instead he replies in terms of Revelation 10, 11. Do you want to read that yeah, for us? Sure. Um, it says, then I was told you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. So this is probably because they were so close to the disappointment. Right. Well, closer than we are, though you have 15 years between the disappointment right. and this. But most of them have gone through that. Yeah. And, and they feel like the little scroll that they've eaten. It's exactly. So they still feel exactly it's, it's sweet in the mouth, but it's bitter in the stomach. For the full episode and other videos delving deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist faith and its story, visit our official channel on YouTube. How can you make your business your mission? Thousands of Adventist entrepreneurs gathered at Southern Adventist University in Tennessee, United States, to learn how to use their businesses as tools for testimony and ministry. Sponsored by Hive, the event underscored the importance of integrating mission into business. Bringing this news is Steve Dickman from OCI, an NGO seeking to establish a global network of lay ministries. Hi, I'm Steve Dickman, OCI on the front lines report. I am at Hive today. Exciting convention, entrepreneurs gathered here from all over the country, probably all over the world, right, Jared? That's right. Amazing Jared, things yeah. happening here. There's actually a focus here this week on something very interesting. Tell us about what's happening here. I think the whole conference is focusing on that intersection of business and mission. and how do you find an intersection where it's not just make money and then go give it to mission, but how can my business actually be serving while I'm doing business? So I know you have a lot of people registered this weekend. It's going to be an exciting weekend. Some very powerful speakers are here. I just met Elder Rick McEdward from the Middle East North African yes. Union and saw Brad. It's exciting that you have that emphasis here. Uh, mission. How can business be your mission? Friends, it's OCI on the front lines. We're here with Hive today. If you're thinking about what to do and what God's leading you to do, we invite you to get involved in mission. Maybe business is going to be your mission. Come yes. to Hive, find out how you can be more effective in your business for Christ. Watch now the story of the conversion of a persecuted Muslim. He was attracted by Jesus and a church with a captivating atmosphere. They came to our house and then, just came like that, they took my documents, my notebook, they took all the documents I had there. And they told, my brother, if we find him, we will kill him. I was just in shock. Because of what? Because you tell me this faith is a good? I say, okay, this belief is good. But I don't want that belief. I want something else. And you tell me? If you don't believe in my belief, I'll kill you. It turned out that I had to leave home. I even had to flee. When I was 15, it believe in anything. I had to pretend for my family that I was still a believer. After that, when I left life, there was more free. And I didn't have to lie to anyone anymore. I didn't believe in any God anymore. Nor in the Jewish one, neither in the Islamic, nor in the Christian God. And the only thing I did, and I did it for a long time, was drinking, using drugs, and the situation kept getting worse. This person who reached out to me did his best to keep me interested. I watched movies about Jesus, and he called me talked to me, and then asked, how are you? I said, it's just getting worse for me. He said, try praying just once. Yes, you'll see. I said, yes, yes, fine, I will do it. Then at night, when wanted to sleep, I prayed for the first time. This was very interesting because I read every day, every month, I have tried and prayed, but I wasn't Catholic. It's, it's 
I wasn't orthodox or anything else. I believed all of this for myself. I felt that there was something that could change my life. I would say I was lost, but now there are many things that are changing my life. I am in a peaceful country. I am protected. When I came to our church, it was a different atmosphere. I don't know how to explain it. It's something different, something pulls. But you don't understand what's going on. I'm at peace, I don't use drugs, and I don't drink. And it's all from God. I could not do it by myself. In June 2022, the General Conference Treasury and Plan Giving and Trust Services Department introduced a brand new resource for the World Church, the Mission Impact Fund. This fund is an investment in missions where the greatest impact can be realized. Its goal is to enable local churches to minister to the needs of their own communities and fulfill their mission. The Mission Impact Fund supports a worldwide effort as churches work to reach their communities in innovative and meaningful ways. Now, we present three of these impactful projects that have developed throughout the world, reflecting the core purpose of the Mission Impact Fund. The Hearing Impaired Education Center is located in Zimbabwe. The Mtapa Community Center of Influence for Mission is central to this project. Since February 2023, two programs for hearing impaired children have been launched. These are the Early Childhood Development, which is a class for children, and the Empowerment Training, which is to provide training in various lines of skills and trades for youth and adults with hearing impairment. Children with hearing impairment are not accommodated in formal schools. Hence, the Early Childhood Development Program is literally changing children's lives. The Skills and Empowerment Training is conducted in collaboration with the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, the Department of Industrial Training and Trade Testing, and Guru Polytechnic College. Skills such as carpentry, clothing textiles, cosmetology and hairdressing, electrical technician training, food preparation, information and computer technology, and motor mechanics are all provided. For those in the skills and empowerment training programs, graduation takes place in October of 2023, and nearly half of those enrolled are not Adventists. This provides a rich opportunity for spiritual seed planting. The Adventist Youth Center of Influence is primarily for reaching a largely illiterate population of young people. Located in Lome, Togo, this project has been implemented by the Maranatha Philadelphia Church in the West Central Africa Division. The first five months of 2023 were a period of intense activity. In order to successfully launch the Amesape Youth Center of Influence, many procedures Applications with large fees, legal and title paperwork were completed by the grace of God. Togo Conference funded this entire process totaling 1,298,000 francs. Thus far, the Adventist Youth Center of Influence has provided health fairs and expos to more than 100 community members. The Maranatha Philadelphia Church is just getting started and we can't wait to hear the many testimonies of this wonderful project. The Mobile Food Pantry is located in the North American Division in Montgomery County, Maryland. With the Mission Impact Fund grant, two school buses were purchased to be retrofitted as a mobile kitchen and food pantry. The first bus, also known as Emmy No. 1 or the Medley Bus, has been licensed by the county to serve food and the second bus was licensed this summer as a food pantry. Since receiving grant funds, nutritional classes have been held at Green Castle Elementary School, and the Emmy buses have partnered with this school to meet the needs of community members who are experiencing food insecurity 
and families facing health disparities. There are vegetarian and vegan cooking classes that have been enthusiastically received by both parents and students. The Emmanuel Brinklow Seventh-day Adventist Church plans to continue its reach into their community using these two buses as a way to meet immediate needs at the local level. The Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ivory Coast, West Africa, gathered leaders and members working in children's ministries for a training aimed at enhancing the spread of the gospel and shaping the character of children. Additionally, over 70% of the members are registered in the files of the General Conference, marking a pioneering effort among the church's administrative offices worldwide. Having everyone in mission means training people. Our leaders and members have been trained to be more effective in preaching the gospel. Those who guide our children and help form their characters are not left out. We have recently hosted the first convention for the Children's Ministries Department, gathering 400 leaders from the entire division in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. We know each person is important, and that's why our division has been careful to keep its members' records updated. All secretary services from the 10 unions have been integrated into only one system and more than 70% of our members are already registered. Our division's archive and record center was assessed by the General Conference and was the first in the World Church to be approved. Meet Agvan and Tagui, whose friendship evolved into love through their shared passion for ministry. Married for nearly eight months, they prioritized making ministry central in their lives. As global mission pioneers, they seek to engage with their community in Armenia, understanding their needs and inviting others to join their mission. When Agvan and Tagui met at church, they became instant friends because of their shared love for ministry. Over time, their love for ministry eventually expanded into a love for each other. We've been married almost eight months now. The first thing that attracted us to each other was that we had the same goal and the same dream. Their shared goal was to make ministry a focal point in their lives. So when the opportunity came, Ogvan and Tagui jumped at the chance to become global mission pioneers. They dream of starting a congregation of new believers in the Nornok neighborhood of Yerevan, Armenia's capital city. Yerevan is the largest city in the country with more than a million people and just over a third of the country's population. People here are busy and it can be difficult to make connections. Recently, people have started living more lonely lives, separated lives. Before, doors to people's homes were open, but now every house has gates. No one can get inside. So it's difficult to get in touch with people. Ogvan and Tagui plan to model Christ's method of ministry by mingling with people, showing sympathy, ministering to people's needs, winning their confidence, and finally inviting them to follow Jesus. One of the ways they will do this is by organizing group activities for their community. In Armenia, a lot of young people want to learn new languages, especially English. This helps them find a good job and develop their career. That's why we're going to organize an English club for youth and kids. This young couple is just weeks away from starting their new roles as global mission pioneers. They haven't begun the work yet and are counting on your prayers. We would like people to pray for our wisdom. We want to have wisdom that will help us understand what to do in each situation. And please pray for the people we will meet. I ask that you pray for us, because missionary work can be hard sometimes. We might stumble along the way. So prayers for our continued service. Thank you for all you do to send global mission pioneers like Ogvan and Tagui to places that need them most. Your support helps this work continue to the ends of the earth. Thank you for supporting Global Mission. You've watched a selection of news about service, faith, love of neighbor, and hope, carried out by the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. Present in over 200 countries, the denomination seeks to be the hands and feet of Christ through its members, leaders, administrative headquarters, institutions, and support ministries. You can access other good news by joining the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and explore the ANN website on Adventist.news. Share your faith story and leave your prayer requests on our channels. We have a team praying for you 24-7. Before I say goodbye, I would like to leave you with excellent news 
recorded in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Study the Bible daily to learn other wonderful promises of hope. God willing, we will meet in the next edition of a and Video. Until then, God bless you.